Is it just me, or there's something dreamy about gazing out on an airplane window at takeoff? And after takeoff, you get the chance to literally cruise amongst the clouds. Then it's followed by that awakening that feels like there's a whole great big world out there waiting just for me. So I was dared to actually get out of my comfort zone because apparently there is a saying that stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things is the best way to grow and I took it upon myself to ride with that. That was the case in choosing where we were going to stay and I chose Hogsberg Inn because Ukel prefers modern. And I had listened to those scary stories growing up, Zoti Goloshi, which were associated with anything old in the middle of nowhere. So this was definitely getting out of my comfort zone. And was I surprised? Who said old is scary? This place is so beautiful. I literally marveled at every corner that it felt I had just stepped back into time. And throughout our stay, was not a single tokoloshe on site. The Hogsback Inn is a special place to stay. History truly oozes from its late 1800 walls and it is set in a spacious and stunning landscape. This was a well thought first activity. As I sat down on the edge and set my intentions yearning for God's view, a prayer was answered and I immediately felt it. My entire being was immediately submerged within an unexplainable level of gratitude. And it was at this point I returned to self and felt myself rise above the mental noise. The 
crystal corner has so much beauty in one space that I couldn't even spot what I wanted to take home. But the grounding incense I smelt as we walked in was a definite take home. The spaces I perused through the different gems and stones from earth itself reminded me of how we all live in abundance of everything we need and that what makes us meet what we yearn for through faith is awareness that we already have and that there is enough for all of us and if we seek from within, life has the mechanisms to propel us forward. What this is, is an artwork and it's all about the earth and I made it in 1995 and 1996 because at that time we knew there was going to be climate change and we knew the reasons why there was going to be climate change. So I thought I'd make a place where art, science, nature and a sense of sacredness came together. And um, I was very influenced by thinkers far greater than myself. And so here, yeah, just touching on the subject of how did the earth form and where. And we do know that the heavy elements in ourselves, it's ordinary chemistry, the heavy elements come from stardust. So how did that happen? And it's really because the earth itself formed in a great nebula, like this one. This is a great cloud of interstellar stardust. And so that stardust got into the earth and then we come from the earth, so therefore we have stardust in us as well. And you know, that's not mumbo jumbo, that's ordinary uh, physics and chemistry. It's, it's science, art, nature and a sense of sacredness. Because you know, we need, need it all. Oh, we can't yeah, have it separated. You can't have the either, no, so they all no, make it. Yeah. And, and while we were building, and we is Dagam Yamavaha and Melsid Pinchana. To men. Yeah. And I was extremely fortunate when they, ca they came uh, here uh, to work for me. And um, so, because they really were good and they got what I was trying to do. I made a model, but not to scale. Anyway, and while I was busy building, the scientists in the Western world acknowledged for the first time the Earth should be regarded as a living organism. And I knew that that was a big uh, step forward because. What has actually happened is the Western way of looking at Earth predominated on all the over the other ways of looking at Earth. People in, in India and in South America and so on looked at it differently. Yeah. But the, the, the Western world looked as if it looked at Earth as if we are separate from it and, and we are entitled to it. And nothing on Earth is separate from anything. Another else. way of putting it is if you look at scans of different image of different mammals in utero you'll find it hard to find which is the human one mm. you know it looks a lot like the Up pig until it then gets to the yeah yeah nice. so now this one i climbed up hogsback one and hogsback one is called Belikumdana. i don't know if you know that yeah. because it's for uh -huh. the baby and the second one is called Mpukwazana because it's a little smaller than so the other so that is and the third one is Kabimbona. And I did uh, the first Be, which one. Which one is Belikumtana? I did Belikumtana. The first one. Yeah, yeah. And I went halfway up to, with the road and then yeah. I climbed up with my board cut in three and uh, just painted what I saw and then put beads around just because mm. uh, actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, the, the villages down here I think that the um, ancestor spirits are in the indigenous forests, okay. so they don't come into the in, at night time oh, know, okay. to uh, disturb the, uh, as the, the ancestors. Mm. Yeah, so so I, I went to Fort Hare and had a look at the beadwork and so on, and you can see a lot from it. You can see, for instance, that cross there shows that the missionaries came, and I always apologise that the missionaries mm. did come, which is I yeah. do, yes, I do understand. The, how they disturbed the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that to yeah. simply change another person's culture is mm. a thing you can't do. And, and that's what they did.
shot it. Better go from Dearborn, early six o'clock this morning, cold fact. That's about a bad suburb, it's such a drag, won't go back. It's Papa don't allow no new ideas here. Now you hear the news, but the words don't sound as clear. Well, Mama, Papa, stop, treasure what you got, soon you may be caught without it. I thought this was overrated. The Madonna and Child is majestic. Absolutely beautiful. I'm lost for words to explain the entire journey leading to finding her at the corner of the long, very challenging hike. As the heavy drops from the fountain made their way through my body, it was as though the magical waters affirmed the strength I choose to walk by and no longer operate from the ego, allowing to be dragged by societal pressures that makes us lower our vibrations and feel less of who we truly are. I have known this and this trip reminded me that there is God within all of us and if we choose to allow for God's love to be dominant, there lies our treasure. I have no words to explain the level of gratitude I feel for this magical experience. All I can say is, South Africa is a beautiful land. We are enough.
about how I got to the wet. Right at the airport. But I'm glad I'm here, I'm safe. Let me tell you, it went from waterfalls to rainfall to cook for me. I strongly believe that your health and wellness are the most important things in one's life. I love Greg Anderson's quote that states, wellness is not a medical fix, but a way of living, a lifestyle sensitive and responsive to all dimensions of body, mind, and spirit. An approach to life we each design to achieve our highest potential for well-being now and forever. Let me put it out there that this was a trip that transformed me beyond just feeding my itchy travel feet, but learning to let go, lean in, and be okay to not being okay. But mostly allowing those around me to take care of me.